Let's try your voice now. My name is Katniss Everdeen. I'm from District 12. Unnecessary, over-the-top, expositional line. Also, couldn't they start her out on something a little simpler? She can't f***ing talk. We're gonna test his response on someone he remembers from home. Someone that will be a surprise to you and the audience. Wait, Katniss doesn't have to wear a jumpsuit, but Prim, who moments earlier didn't have to wear a jumpsuit, is now wearing a jumpsuit. Did they roll out new outfits between the day that happened between the last film and this film? Good thing Peter's wearing the standard issue modesty leggings provided by this underground hospital. Snow has to pay for what he's done. Her damaged vocal cords, speaking voice sounds just like my morning after a really good night voice. This will they won't they with these two just needs to be a won't they because they clearly don't want to dedicate any time to having Katniss's emotions toward Gail make any sense. That's like kissing someone who's drunk. Doesn't count. This micro PSA is brought to you by the Cosby Consortium. That's an application of the hummingbird trap. This is why YA is so popular, because it lets teens fantasize that adults give a shit about their dumbass ideas. I guess there are no rules anymore about what a person can do to another person. This society killed children for sport. There were never any rules. This is the nut. <laughs> ah, the hologram. The make your movie look futuristic and stupid at the same time CGI crutch that despite years and years of progress never improves. We took heavy losses. Gwendolyn Christie's acting specialty is showing up as a military commander for all of four minutes in blockbuster films. Your people have suffered more than just about anyone else at the hands of the government. Which is why I won't condone a mass suicide. If also because they already did that at the dam in District 5. There's civilians in there. In the underground, impossible to penetrate military compound? What the hell for? Does the movie not really want to show us this avalanche plan they just cooked up? Hasn't the series made enough money to show it? Ah, probably not. We just want to stay here with Katniss while she looks extra concerned. That's why I killed Kato. And he killed Thresh. And Thresh killed Claude. I can't even remember who any of these people are anymore. This may be more of a sin on me, but I don't have a sin counter, so... Cinna made her suit bulletproof, which is great. What's even better is that this wasn't a headshot. I've said it before, but I'm gonna say it again. These displays are the f***ing worst. They're the quality of an old CRT television, complete with analog tape tracking. But they are also slightly transparent, which is a terrible idea if you want to watch what is on the screen and not what is behind it. We toasted a glorious era coming to its bitter end. Snow's poisoning game is so impeccably timed, Antonius was able to hear all of Snow's speech just before dying. Also, the capital embraces the names, murdering tactics, and general decadence of the Roman Empire, but they are surprisingly short on orgies. Send us all to that. Of course your costume would be bulletproof. I would sure as f hope so. This movie seems to imply that not everyone is wearing bulletproof clothing, which would be f***ing dumb, given that they're always going into active war zones. The whole tacky romance drama and the defender of the hopeless act, even though it's not an act, which makes it even more unbearable. This basically sums up why I don't like any of these movies. All I know is that I would have saved myself a lot of suffering if I had just given that bread to the pig. I know he's supposed to be all brainwashed against Katniss, but he's not wrong. As far as the soldiers know, you survived a bullet to the heart. Because all the soldiers are idiots and can't assume that giant rigid plate she was wearing on her chest was bulletproof. Wedding between two people I don't care about is about par for the course when it comes to all the weddings I witness. Also, this movie is two hours and 15 minutes long and it has time for this bullshit. Everyone still has to wear janitor jumpsuits, except for Effie, who gets to wear her Lady Gaga outfits again. And even though this takes place in an entirely different universe than ours, the people of Pan Am still have to deal with folksy, rustic, chic weddings. I guess I could just stay here and cover for you. Only a few minutes earlier, she was lamenting about how much she didn't like Katniss, and now she's willing to assist her with her half-baked plan to kill President Snow. Of all the things to survive whatever apocalypse resulted in Pan Am, I can't believe fiddle music was one of them. 360 Hug. Am I supposed to believe that Katniss was able to sneak into this giant armory from the living quarters and hop onto a cargo plane, all while being Katniss, one of the most recognizable people in all of Pan Am? I guess so. Just so future dystopian dictators are aware, it's probably a good idea to build at least one other city to rule from. It's really hard to flee the capital when there's literally nowhere else to go. Her outfit is about three steps away from the fashion of Bill and Ted's reality. So I figure the Hunger Games have to happen before people start being excellent to one another. President Snow is building a minefield of traps. The next thing she says isn't we have a giant map of it, so it will be very easy to avoid these traps. I know when you're gonna go off on your own. If Katniss is planning on going off on her own, then why would she let everyone know she was in the capital by walking out of the cargo vessel in plain sight? Now all the rebels in the capital will know she's missing when she goes off on her own. Which may end up not being a problem, because she went missing in 13 and no one seemed to give a shit. Each one of you is elite in some form of combat. Except for the two cameramen and the director, they're elite in pizzazz. Because we don't want the game makers to know we have this intel. It has a self-destruct on it. Yeah, but doesn't the fact that if you survive even a couple of those booby traps tell them that? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 76th Hunger Games. If only. Do you know why you originally wanted to see the Hunger Games? It was because of the f***ing Hunger Games. Yeah, it was brutal and terrible, but it was a hell of a lot more fun than this revolution bullshit. Would you have paid to see either of these two Mockingjay movies if it weren't for the first two Hunger Games? Probably not. Didn't they blow up this dam in the last movie? I guess it's a different dam, but since I have no idea where the other dam was or why it was important, I reserve the right to claim the filmmakers didn't either. 
Was that manufactured by Tiger Electronics? Just out of frame, the cast of Maze Runner Scorch Trials is avoiding Wicket. Hold it. Pollux Tider. But they're gonna film them shooting at the pods and use the footage for more propos. How is that not going to give away that they all know where the pods are? Look, I get why the game makers made all these booby traps for the rebels to run through and everything, but I don't know why they made this obstacle course so sporting. This is war. You can make it super unfair if you want to. Now the rebels even got this far as amazing. Oh no, an exploding car that makes absolutely no impact to this scene whatsoever. They want us to add him to the prop boat. Show that he's on our side now. The rebel brass seem to care way more about making videos than formulating battle tactics. Friend, lover, victor, fiance. The cook, the thief, his wife, her lover. You will be a vital part of the democracy that follows our victory. Be a vital part of the democracy that follows our victory. You got it. The guy recited each line one at a time after the line was fed to him. He has yet to say it all together. He does not got it. This shit is stupid. I mean, yeah, it would kill you all right, but what about slamming a big metal gate down so they can't go any farther? Or bombs? Or the dogs with bees in their mouths that shoot bees at you? Hell, if there's a possibility that the rebels were going to trigger this booby trap, I'd also booby trap the place where they were taking cover right now. I mean, Jesus. Also, this Hunger Games is like the first scene in Raiders of the Lost Ark, except it's basically the whole f***ing movie. Even after constant warnings about how there might be pods we don't know about, Bog still decides to trust his little gizmo without any hesitation. Goodness, don't trust them. Guy who's dying still has the moxie to play the f***ing pronoun game. Where is this tar coming from? Good of that overflowing river of oil to stop flowing right at this very spot, so that PETA can attack Katniss and neither of them dies. I think we're leaving teen dystopian future movie and heading towards a softcore Saw movie. Hunger Games series, having already copied 2012 last time, copies the day after tomorrow in the finale. I guess it would have been unreasonable for the black sludge to continue rising, so they drew the line at convenience. How did all that overflowing oil retreat back to where it came from? Do they have some sort of vacuum or something to bring all that oil back? Seems like it would be in the capital's best interest just to leave the ocean of oil there, strand these people, and starve them to death. It looks like they've decided to hide out in the bottle from I Dream of Genie. I guess every structure the capital has built is extremely brittle and could be destroyed with a relatively small amount of explosives. The future depicted in this series is violent and bleak, but at least everyone gets really good reception, even in the middle of battles. Katna 17 seems to have met a violent end. The rebels didn't really hide when they ran across the courtyard, and they could definitely be seen in that footage the Capitol just broadcast. Yet the peacekeepers only shot where the bullets were coming from, and nothing else. The Capitol really needs to work on getting their cameras to work all the time, instead of just when it's convenient to our main characters. These four were Capitol citizens, and therefore exempt from the Hunger Games, so why did they have these glamour shots on file? Also, this isn't an actual Hunger Games where they should honor the fallen, and Caesar just talked about how they were foolish, so why the f*** is the Capitol even wasting their time with this in-memoriam reel? So, Katniss Everdeen, a poor, unstable girl with nothing but a small talent with a bow and arrow, is dead. Earlier in the movie, President Snow said this sh You have a habit of burying people before they're dead. But here he is doing the exact same thing. Didn't see a body of any kind, but declares Katniss dead. And it's not even a propaganda film. He really thinks she's dead. For those of you who don't know me, please allow me to introduce myself. The Capitol, with all its vast resources, can't seem to figure out a way to keep the rebels from hijacking broadcasts. I had no idea I meant so much to her. She's been a propaganda pawn since the first Hunger Games. And it's not like we don't know at this point that coin is shady. The quasi-snarky attitude she's copying here really comes off as naive. My brother knows these tunnels really well. Of course he does. And when they arrive at the hedge maze that I'm sure this movie has, there will be a guy who built the maze in their small propaganda party. Also, the capital booby-trapped everywhere above ground, but never once thought the underground tunnels would be a place where a rebel force might try to enter. Man, these subway tunnels are super well lit for places where people shouldn't be walking around in the first place. I bet the capital's electricity bills are insane. If dictators have one strength, it's keeping the trains running during a revolution. We're too exposed here. Yeah, but no booby traps, so it's better than above ground, right? They survived. I don't know how. I do. They walked up one flight of stairs and didn't get shot at. Pretty simple to me. I'm gonna stop here for a bit and get some rest, yeah? Are we gonna have to watch all of that also? They would show me pictures of my life, but some weren't real. It would have been nice for them to actually show this instead of having PETA tell the whole story. Just another way these last two movies wasted their time. Did someone spill some Amityville horror in this Hunger Games? We gotta go. We gotta get out of here now. After PETA's urgency, we spend roughly four minutes just slowly walking around the sewers, giving me enough time for the suspense to wear off and the frustration over nothing happening to wear on. Here's two minutes of our heroes crawling around in the sewer, because Mockingjay makes more money and less sense if it's two separate movies. <laughs> oh no! Chuds! Also, somehow these vicious creatures ran through all this water without making a noise until someone turned around and noticed them. Since we aren't in some kind of jungle, like the earlier Hunger Games, we get weird alien creatures rather than mutant monkeys. Also, did one of these alien clones whisper Katniss a minute ago? Are these things sentient enough to emulate movie tropes? I guess in this universe, if you already have a giant bruise on your abdomen from a bullet wound, you can't get any more. Otherwise, this would hurt like and Katniss would be down for the count. Yet, here we are. 
Close up, dark, quick, edited, random nothingness of an action scene. This movie steals from the house of aliens, but instead of stealing the million dollars in gold bullion on the coffee table, they stole a watch and an umbrella and called it a day. <laughs> That's what you get when you decide to get married. I waited on this sin long enough. How does Katniss still have her arrows to shoot? She had like 12 to start, right? And only four of them were the explodey ones. Either the movie is f***ing with us or she has a Mary Poppins quiver. President Snow discovered Adam Sandler's Pixels technology. President Snow and his minions clearly did not give a f because their pods are destroying everything. These assholes jump at the last minute, but how did they have any idea that whatever it is behind them was going to stop at that exact spot? And why would you make a booby trap that arbitrarily cuts itself off halfway through the subway station? I don't remember falling asleep, but did I just wake up watching a live-action adaptation of Kung Fu Panda? I know you. You were a stylist in the games. Until Snow decided I wasn't pretty enough anymore. In Snow's defense, lady, you took the name Tigress way too literally. Hide down here in Meemaw's basement. Also, nearly this whole movie is running from one place to another and then waiting for 10 minutes, and no one even has an interesting sex story to tell. I'd even accept a straight theft of one of the soldiers' stories in Saving Private Ryan right now. No sin, just sweet relief. A broadcast signal can be picked up in this basement? Even if I didn't know what was going to happen at the end of this scene, I'd be an asshole walking in this crowd thinking, Snow's going to pack all of us into his mansion, and then I'd leave because what a bunch of bullshit. Rebel Missile Ex Machina. Katniss and Gale somehow avoid getting hit by a hail of gunfire. Then this explosion makes them fall sideways so they can avoid getting hit by the truck. Now that is some lucky bullshit right there. I mean, come on. No debris whatsoever from that blast hits Katniss. The big twist at the end is not that Katniss is an indestructible robot, because she would have to be to survive all the shit this movie is throwing at her. Run, Rose! Prim sits there staring at Katniss so long, you might as well plaster a neon sign on the screen that says Prim's gonna die. Half the last two movies' runtime is dedicated to Katniss in hospitals. The fight was over after the Capitol dropped those bombs to defend the palace. So we spend the entire series building up to a war, and then we don't even get to see how that war ends. Peacekeepers, palace guards, they had kids in there too. Once again, Katniss and we, the audience, are being told what happened after the fact. This is the most boring episode of MTB Cribs I've ever seen. Let her in. Good thing an authority figure was here at this very moment so Katniss could confront Snow. I must concede it was a masterful move on Coin's part. Wait a minute, so Coin is the one who killed all those kids? But that means other people know, right? She found rebels who willingly launch bombs on children. How would she keep that secret? Oh, my dear Miss Everdeen, I thought we'd agreed never to lie to each other. And the honor of this insane dictatorial murderer holds fast, for some reason, as if he has any reason to ever keep or make a promise to Katniss. But it is narratively convenient for the climax. Is that you? I don't know. If someone asks you if you helped murder a bunch of children and you respond with I don't know, you might as well say, yes, I did. You want to have another Hunger Games with... The Capitol's children? You're joking. Not in the slightest. With all the hotheads in that room that are vehemently opposed to a Hunger Games for obvious reasons, no one decides to kill Coin right now. Hamish is the only person at the table who understands what Katniss is trying to do. Ah, the old diegetic sound switcheroo. Also, they sure lucked the f*** out that their large arsenal of timpani didn't get destroyed. The first movie had the characters travel down this route in chariots, so who knows how long walking would take. I bet they cut out like 15 minutes here. So Effie made it out alive, obviously, but what happened to Caesar Flickerman? Does he still get to host his little show, or did the rebels explode him? Luckily, this execution is staged so that Snow is right in front of Coin, and Katniss can shoot her arrow without dramatically changing directions. I get that the rebels all hate Snow and want him dead, but... Why did none of them go for Katniss, who should be considered a traitor for killing the new president? Coin isn't much of a bleeder. This area is probably clean enough for another execution. Promise me you'll find it. Find what? The life of a victor. There's no way she could know what it is. I mean, do we really need to find more ways to fill time in what is essentially a four and a half hour movie that only needed to be two hours long? Is that the same cat from before? The one that we last saw in the bunker? I smell a spinoff. Hunger Games Homeward Bound Part 1. <laughs> Holy sh! this is the calmest cat in the face of flying objects and screaming I have ever seen. Movie decided to take the Return of the King route when it comes to ending the series. I found these, uh, over by the edge of the forest. It's Primrose. I'm done. You'll be happy to hear that Katniss's mother has been training new medical units in the capital. This is the second letter being read to Katniss in five minutes. Katniss is only here to listen to people describe things, not actually witness it. You love me, real or not real. Real. All Katniss had to do was f*** the distrust out of PETA. No happy ending is complete without a baby thrown into the mix. She and PETA lived through a horrific war and are no doubt scarred for life, but they're parents now, so yay, I guess. It's a page from the Harry Potter book of, oh god, how do I end this sh I have nightmares too. I have nightmares three. One of mine is this movie won't end. Your bra bomb better work, nerdlinger. Okay. <laughs>
Gentlemen, to evil. Later, release him. So we can't go anywhere in the streets. And the rooftops are just as bad. We will go through the mines. Stay alive. Stay alive, no matter what occurs. I will find you. I need you to lie back. You're okay. Yeah, you're gonna be okay! Say the goddamn words, yeah. you're gonna be okay! Jenny. Forrest, I do love you. Sorry, ma'am, can't let you pass. You shall 